really exciting uh, event today, and it's facilitated by myself, uh, Nicola Pallet from University of Cape Town, uh, Jerome Duga from University of Jos, Nigeria, and Sandea Ganes from the University of Mauritius. And I just thought I'd ask folks to please, if you're still uh, getting here or you've just arrived, please share in the text chat what you do, where you're from, and what learning design means to you. And I think uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to give some official introductions. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, Sandeya Gunness is a lecturer in the Open and Online Learning uh, at the Center for Innovative and Lifelong Learning at the University of Mauritius. She teaches primary and secondary level teachers about OER and technology so that they can improve their teaching practices. Um, this is a form is formalized through an online module delivered within the BSc Educational Technologies program at the University of Mauritius. Sandea is currently doing research on the extent of teaching transformations and whether this can be sustained in Mauritian schools through open educational practices. She is also interested in collaborative networks and how these are linked and enhanced through open educational practices. Uh, then we have my colleague and fellow Emerge Africa team member, Dr. Jerome Duga, who is an English lecturer at the University of Jos in Nigeria. Uh, he is the Emerge Africa Regional Coordinator for West Africa and Commonwealth of Learning, uh, e-learning consultant to the School of Education at the National Open University of Nigeria, NAUN. Uh, he trains fellow academics in Jos, an e-learning fellowship uh, program to use technology for teaching and research. He holds a PhD in English and received postgraduate training in educational technology at UCT. Um, Jerome has presented research papers in various fora, a range of countries, has published quite a bit. Um, yeah, so and I'm sure after this event you'll get to know Jerome more. As for myself, I am an educational technology lecturer based in the Center for Innovation, Learning and Teaching at UCT. Um, as part of, I also am part of the Emerge Africa team and co convene the Facilitating Online course. Um, and at UCT, I'm involved in a variety of curriculum innovation initiatives, uh, which includes assisting university staff with blended and online learning design. So, yeah, you can read more about us on the Emerge Africa site. And please continue sharing your introductions. So I'm asking you to share in the text chat what you do, where you're from, and what learning design means to you. So on our Facebook page and on the Emerge Africa site, some of you have already completed our survey. And if you haven't, I will share the link. And we invite you to continue. If you haven't completed the short survey yet, uh, to do so after this event. So here's the link, but I'm going to share some um, sort of in-progress uh, feedback, just what folks have said so far. So here were some of our survey questions. We asked folks, what does learning design mean at your institution? Who does it? Perhaps, you know, are there particular design processes that are used? Uh, what kinds of work do you think the role of learning designer entails? Does such a role exist at your institution? Um, how do learning designers in Africa enter the profession? And what kinds of professional development opportunities exist? Okay, so those are some of the survey questions. Um, because, and and why, some of you might wonder why are we doing this event? I think I should should also share that. So many higher education institutions are adopting some kind of blended and or e-learning, accentuating the need for learning design of educational materials. Uh, there are variances in how colleagues in universities across the African continent define the meaning, processes, roles, and work of learning design and learning designers. So in today's webinar, we have a panel of individuals involved in learning design in different capacities at the institutions, and we're going to also be reporting back on some of these survey results in progress. Um, 
that respond to these questions. So we want to, to gather a sense of the landscape across institutions in Africa. Uh, and the survey is uh, one way of doing this. We're not going to be able to discuss all of these questions in um, things in detail, but I hope that today you're likely to gain some new insights in relation to most of these. Uh, we also want to flag that we're not trying to see who is or is not doing learning design, or to say X institution is doing things wrong. Um, learning design is a complex and socially situated practice that is not yet well understood in African higher education. So we're going to start making sense of it together. Um, I want to also reinforce that nobody's experience is inadequate. Uh, we're all on a journey and we're all at uh, different stages of that journey. All right, so there are quite a few formal definitions of learning design out there. This one is from Grania Canal. And she defines it as a methodology for enabling teachers or designers to make more informed decisions in how they go about designing learning activities, interventions, which is pedagogically informed and makes effective use of appropriate resources and technologies. All right, so that's Grania's definition. Then we asked some of our colleagues, Emerge Africa member colleagues, about what they said. And I want to, we asked, what does learning design mean at your institution? And you can see folks came from different kinds of institutions. 64.7% um, were from residential institutions who also do a bit of blended, uh, blended teaching. Okay, so you can have a look at the, um, bear in mind that uh, we only have 17 people who completed the survey so far. So we really encourage you to, to continue um, or, or to complete it if you have not done so. And these 17 response, responses came from Mauritius, Niger, Nigeria, South Africa, Swaziland, Uganda, and Zimbabwe. And what we found is that res responses to this question suggests a mix of what learning design entails, who does it, and what it means on the ground. The concept of learning design seems quite new to some colleagues, um, where we're, I sense folks are trying to match up an unfamiliar label with things they do already, such as using technology in the classroom. So technology integration, or teaching with technology, or materials and uh, development, so in practice, people are grappling with a new concept. Um, but it's also, learning design is also a perspective which may be new to some, uh, as it is uh, quite learner-centered uh, than a lot of traditional institutions uh, are comfortable with. And I think it's fair to say that responses can be summarized along a spectrum of what is emphasized and how closely this resembles formal definitions. So an emphasis on student learning experience, I think, is more closer to the formal definition. And the left is what how learning design is being interpreted on the ground. Um, it seems that particular responses are privileged uh, in practice because of institutional factors. So things like the type of university, whether residential or distance. So for example, distance institutions might be a bit more delivery and materials development focused, whereas resident and residential obviously, you know, have their own challenges. Some are also quite uh, teacher focused. So they focus more, um, some, some can be quite sage on the stage and delivery like. I also think it's important to mention that 15 of our respondents who are, are lecturers and only two are in other roles, so instructional design of distance materials, um, blended learning coordinators. So it also depends on who one asks and what you asked, uh, what we ask in the survey. That I suspect is, um, it, it's really interesting. There's an underlying issue here I think folks uh, don't realize, which is that um, underlying learning design are cultures of teaching and learning, ways of doing things, but at this stage, we have too few responses to make broad generalizations. Um, but we can discuss this further on our Facebook event page, follow-up webinars, uh, and research. 
but I want to highlight a very, very interesting thing. The interesting thing, when we ask folk to, folks who does learning design at your institution, is that colleagues are saying lecturers are the ones who do it, or collaborate with e-learning support staff to do it. So folks are saying we do it. Remember, as I said, 15 out of the 17 people are lecturers. Um, you are the folks who have completed it. You're not saying this is something that gets outsourced or there is a special unit uh, with people who do this and we don't get involved. You're all saying we do this. Um, you know, it's important to us. So that that's really the exciting part about this, I think. Now, just a reminder, because I realize there are folks who are new to learning design. So this is a lay, sort of introductory definition that Tony and I use in workshops, um, where we say learning designs is about the deliberate design of courses to support learning. It involves elements of course uh, that are aligned to purpose, students, structure, resources, learning activities, uh, and assessment also involves purposeful integration of technology. But what learning design isn't is that it's not all about technology. Most often it's about pedagogy uh, before technology. Okay, and there are many, many models out there, but no matter which one you encounter or definition of learning design, they are most likely to attend to these principles, which are know your students and context, be clear about your course purpose, objectives, learning outcomes, choose teaching stat strategies based on how people learn, and in particular how you think your students learn particular things based in your course, design engaging learning activities, um, choosing appropriate tools and matching assessment to learning outcomes. So a lot of you might say, well, this is just good teaching practice, right? Um, and that's just something we can discuss. But with this in mind, I'd like to hand over to Sandea Gunnis, who's going to give you a perspective uh, from the University of Mauritius. Thanks, everyone. Hi. Um, can you all hear me? I think you are. Yeah? Okay, great. Um, thank you. So I'm going to be uh, presenting about a bit what we do at the university. And this is my definition that I put up on my learning design course. And uh, I'm going to read it out. So thank you, Olifemi. Uh, at best, e-learning is as good as the best classroom learning and at worst it's as bad as the worst classroom learning so the most important part here is the learning and the difference between um, good learning e-learning or classroom learning the difference is design how, how do you design the learning experience for the students for the learners and uh, Effective e-learning requires both design and development. So when you have designed it, you have to be able to deliver. And uh, while design is decisions, what goes into the into the class, what goes into the learning environment, what goes into the learning contents, uh, the development part is the doing. And this is all part of the learning designer's job. Um, and um, so I'm just going to go, so this is a bit uh, a picture of the University of Mauritius and uh, how I work on OER and some surveys that we've done. And um, can we go to the next slide? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, the way the course uh, at university is designed is we take the learning system, so take the whole a systemic sort of approach. And we take the needs assessment proposal for the learning system. We develop the knowledge, the skills, um, and assessments, and how uh, the content would plug in to be able to enable students to get into those um, uh, to get those knowledge and those skills. So it's not just content for content's sake. It's 
the pathway of how they acquire the knowledge. Um, then we go through the production of the learning material. And uh, in the learning environment, if we go up here, I don't know if you can see that, um, we have the contents, but also supported through the servers. So we're using Moodle as a platform. And the communication tools and techniques, which are support, which are actually uh, implemented by the tutors. So the most important part of an electronic system is the human, um, the human who decides what goes into the content, the human who decides how the content is going to be delivered, and the human who is going to be communicating and deciding when and how to communicate. So um, you know, if you're thinking of uh, education technologies or learning design being fully technology, it's that's not true. Uh, there are there goes a lot of thinking into that. Um, so, uh, what are the types of learning activities that we do? Uh, so, just to you know, just to get you to know about how uh, a student would learn about learning design, first he had to acquire the jargon. And um, one of the great ways is on an e-learning platform is through the glossary of terms. And uh, we have a more visual glossary where I really want students to bring in graphics and, and cartoons um, just to display a bit more about what they have learned. So acquiring the jargon, but also um, with a sense of uh, where it all fits and how it fits in the learning environment. So um, for the design and delivery aspect, we have a framework called ATARA, which is about uh, the objectives, a theme, the assessment, activities, uh, the resources, and the, and the assessment. Um, so it's, it's sort of you take the objectives to the assessment part to the end, and then find out, work out backwards of how um, how the tools and technologies, what activities you have, so what the resources you have, to be able to enable uh, the learner to um, to understand the content best. And this is all through a theme-based approach. Um, so. To be able to to do all that, we obviously have to do a, an analysis of the target audience. Who are you designing your content for? And uh, one of the ways we do uh, the the store the the design or the planning of the content is through the storyboards. And uh, I'm I would request that you know you could go look at Lino It and Poplet as uh, software applications that you could download and use to uh, create your um, storyboards. Um, when our students have designed particular content, then uh, what they do is they go and implement it. So the evaluation aspect starts from the beginning. Obviously, when they're creating the glossary, they want uh, we want students to be able to evaluate. So we have sort of peer reviews of the definitions and you know sort of competitive uh, aspect where we want students to say oh this definition could be better and uh, this is what I found and so at the same time they're doing um, research or searches at least um, and eventually coming back and uh, you know refining what others have have uh, in uh, have uh, inserted as their glossary terms. So when um, I'm, I'm going to be moving backwards and forwards from from this uh, from this slide. So um, when we have finished the design of a particular learning context, so they can they can design anything they want to learn, they want to uh, teach about. So it could go from from, um, I don't know, nutrition to, um, to health, to 
physics to geography to so they could choose any topic that they are familiar with it could be community uh, based uh, services it could be Hindi it could be um, any type of topic that they would want to uh, teach and they would want they would then design and uh, develop it on a particular uh, learning environment so it could be on a PowerPoint as simply as that or it could be through uh, EXE, which is a free um, pedagogical tool, authoring tool. Um, I, I, could, I could type up the, the links for you, so EXE, which is an authoring tool. And um, they actually go and test these tools in the classroom. And we want them to videotape the testing. How it, how is, how was the implementation done? Uh, what were the students like? Did they like the technology? Did they like the learning? What did they learn actually? And eventually come back and put all these contents in the reflected portfolios. Um, so if we just go on to the evaluation part now, you can see um, how the evaluation actually cr cuts across from the beginning of the module to the end. Um, so I'm going to go to the next slide and this will give you a bigger, a better view of what, sorry, no. <laughs> uh, okay. So, oops. Yeah. Uh, the Reeves model is basically a 13 uh, um, component model, which is about the philosophy. So what, what type of learning uh, do you believe in? Do you believe in a more teacher-centered approach? Do you, more, do you believe in a more uh, student-centered approach? How do you uh, situate yourself in terms of how you deliver your courses? What are the learning theories you, you apply? Um, what is the goal orientation? So are you focused on, on, on more um, specific skills or more general skills, attitudes, uh, knowledge? Um, is the task more theoretical or do you want it in an authentic uh, contextual setting? Um, are you giving marks for the, for the content for, for students learning? Or are you asking them to be um, to demonstrate, you know, um, their learning through more uh, tacit, explicit rather than tacit uh, modes of, of, of demonstration? Um, as a teacher, are you more facilitative, or are you more uh, do you are you more didactic? Do you take the role of the sage on the stage? Um, what is the metacognitive support that you provide? So beyond the learning, have students understood how they were learning, whether they um, they incorporated particular reflective practices of what they were learning, whether they could be better learned in a particular different way. Um, do you encourage uh, do you encourage collaborative learning, group work, uh, discussions? peer reviews, um, how culturally sensitive are you, so gender bias also is, comes into that, and uh, what is the structural flexibility, so, so how open is the content, is it fixed or do you want students to go and bring in more content to, to, the, um, to the course. So uh, all these are quality criteria that we use for, for uh, the digital learning resource. So students, after when they have done the learning design course, they're assessed according to these criteria. So um, I guess this is all for from me. Uh, I hope I've been able to summarize a bit of what we do as a learning designers here at the university. Um, are there questions for me? I think if we can save some questions uh, to the end, uh, if that's okay, so okay there. Yeah. Uh, I've been collecting great, them great. here. Okay, okay great. Yeah. 
then we well, let's hand over yeah that's very very interesting um I see there's a lot of interest here in the Okara um, approach or the model, model. And we, we can share a bit more about that I think in uh, you know resources on the Facebook page but now I'm going to hand over to Jerome I'm ready. Jerome, Jerome, I'm going to have to cut you off because both can't hear you. Okay, let's see if it It's no. Yeah, Irene says she can't hear. Jacob says sound not there. Fiona says no. Um, keep talking quickly. Jerome? Yeah, it's 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 yeah. very unfair. Apologies for that, Jerome. I guess bandwidth is just not on our side today. Um. Sorry about that, folks. Um, unfortunately, when you're trying to coordinate with folks from across the continent, it can be um, quite difficult bandwidth-wise. Some of you who were in the room earlier know that Jerome, uh, Sandea, and myself tested earlier, and we got things working pretty well. Um, so apologies uh, for that. Yes, I do also notice that, Irene, that Jerome has two devices. Um, but rather than leaving folks hanging, um, what is your second device? Jerome Duga 2. I'm going to ask Jakob to just do a bit of um, 
technical stuff in the background. And then I think I'll, I'll move on to my section. And then we go back to you, Jerome. OK, so if you guys could, Jakob and Jerome, um, maybe open a, another chat window, do the technical stuff. OK, cool. So while we've got uh, Jerome and Jakob working on that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about also what, what sparked this event. Uh, this picture was taken by Jennifer Madrill uh, of Designers for Learning at the AACT convention in Las Vegas last year. Um, those of you who have been Emerge members for a while might know that Emerge Africa became affiliated with the AACT uh, last year, which is one of the oldest uh, e-learning uh, professional you know, organizations um, that I am aware of. They're about like 62 years old. And anyway, but we'll share more information about that in a newsletter coming up. Um, but the question that Jen asked attendees to respond to was, what impact would you like to make? And this got me thinking. Um, I really think learning design is one of the areas where capacity building is really needed. Um, and in our recent survey with the Association of African Universities, the AAU, colleagues across the continent um, saw this as a need too. And this webinar and the survey associated with it aims to feed into this. Okay, so I, I'm based at UCT. As I mentioned, I'm an educational technology lecturer. Um, and one of the courses I co-teach on is um, online learning design. I think before I get there um, and talk about learning design in that context, I also want to share some things that have been going on in the background uh, before that. So this is a sketch note by my Emerge Africa colleague, Catherine Fortune, uh, from the Emerging Technologies and Authentic Learning Conference back in 2015. At that stage, Kath was a student on the Postgraduate Diploma in Educational Technologies program at UCT. Um, and you know we attended this this COP ATM um, workshop. And I think I'll also just share where my learning des, uh, design journey started because I know a lot of you know it's one of the questions on the survey what professional development opportunities exist. Okay, so I did not study learning design formally, but I did the COP ATM online workshop that was hosted by Emerge, uh, presented by Gran. I think. Was Grania Canal and participated in some MOOCs. I was also fortunate to have attended local conferences. Um, I attended workshops, presentations by Jan Harrington, Shelley Salmon. Um, however, when it came to co-teaching and working with colleagues, especially on the online learning design course, that's where I truly learned the value of learning design and what it meant. So I learned through experience. Um, I also co-presented an online webinar series with Yolanda Morkel, who is also attending today, uh, that gets educators to dwell in the analyze, uh, problem defining and refining space, uh, rather than going straight to the solution space. We found that often people go to the technology, um, people go to the technology first. Indeed, it was fun. And if folks want to catch up on that, we have recordings on the Emerge Africa YouTube channel. Uh, Jakob also posted the ones from Grenier and uh, Jerome also had one last year. <clears throat> but anyway, um, moving on with, with all these things. So both online and face-to-face -face opportunities have played a big role in my professional development uh, and sort of coming to know what learning design is all about. I also did a postgraduate diploma in higher education studies after completing my PhD in media studies. And I found that this really helped me as a learning designer because I gained a more informed and critical perspective of things such as learning theories, pedagogic strategies, assessment, evaluation. And I also gained a new respect for practitioners. Um, I've entered quite a practitioner researcher space uh, in my own career as well. Uh, what I find people struggle with who are new to learning design is not necessarily the technology, but pedagogic strategies, as well as the fact that learning design is an iterative process. It requires people to think quite differently about teaching and learning. 
um, going from a transmissive teacher-centered delivery focus perspective to focusing more on student learning uh, experiences. Sometimes wrapping one's head around pedagogic strategies and appropriate tools to support this. Uh, some folks experience that it's quite hard at first as well. Okay, so this is what learning design looks like behind the scenes of our online learning design course at UCT. So I co-teach. I'm just going to share the link if you're interested. Have a look in the text chat. Okay, so as I mentioned, I co-teach on the PGDIP and EdTech on the online learning design course, and we're really trying to walk our talk. Um, and learning design for this course happens three months in advance, up to a week before, and even during the course. We're adapting things all the time. I've got some students attending today uh, this webinar, and they'll be able to tell you that. Um, so. Planning in this way, so it's similar to, as Sandeo shared about Lino and Poplet, we're doing it on on paper, right? So we're, we're kind of doing this planning thing with the sticky notes, just start doing it online. Um, and we then can see, okay, what are we teaching where? What are the learning outcomes? Do we need uh, narrated presentations for the pre-course task, uh, slides, activities, you know, what's going to go where? Um, so my two colleagues, uh, Associate Professor Cheryl Hodgkinson-William and Shanali Gavinder and I, we were working offline using pieces of paper um, and, and color stickers that represent teacher and student activity. So we found this quite useful because we could see then, um, you know, where is the student voice, where is the teacher voice. So we got a good mix um, because we believe that learning design is about a conversation. Um, and if some of you have heard about swim lanes, so the stickers help us to do kind of swim lane type thinking. So while our students experience an intentionally designed learning experience during our uh, one week block release course, uh, there's lots that's gone on behind the scenes. Um, we only have a week to get it right, essentially. Um, you know, a week for face to face because our students, as I said, they do block release, they come from across the continent, so we have to use our pre-course task, online pre-course task, and you know, think about assessment really wisely, think about what tasks are used to elicit prior knowledge and experience, how are we going to consolidate the day's thinking, prepare, prepare for the next day, all those sorts of things. So for us, learning design, um, yeah, for us, learning design is about apprenticeship, it's all about conversation. And we also try to realize our learning outcomes through intentional course design and modeling learning design by giving students a well-designed learning experience. Um, so doing this with my colleagues has been very, you know, very, very useful, deepening my own learning experience. And it's really rewarding when students comment about the intentionality of the course. And I think this impacts a lot on quality intentional design and lectures purposefully uses designing activities to engage um, them. Um, they really, I think students can smell good design and this translates to good, uh, good course evaluations. So here's the model that we use in our course. Uh, we've adapted the Dabach and Van and Rutland model and Moore and Mogilevsky's design inquiry of learning model as conceptual framework for practice. Um, we draw on ideas from agile development models to show the iterations of the cycle and from the principles of um, open educational practices. And we have six iterative processes. But I think what's unique about it is that we believe that thinking, thinking like a learning design is at the heart of design. So in our course, we define design for, learn, for learning online as a complex problem-solving process determining what needs to be learned uh, and why, by whom, in what context, and how this learning might be best supported through adopting appropriate pedagogic strategies that optimize the affordances of various technologies. We try to get our students to become conscious about their design assumptions as well as capabilities. So sometimes one person realizes that they need to learn more about pedagogic strategies and another might find, you know, they're 
think they need to think more about appropriate tools in relation to the challenge um, that they're learning challenge that they're exploring. Um, yeah, and very often people don't come with a vast repertoire of tools because they've not experienced the effective use of these as a teacher or student uh, themselves. Okay, so as mentioned already, I think all online learning activities involve assumptions about design choices, uh, and Sandeya mentioned this as well, whether it's explicit or implicit. Uh, no design is atheoretical, whether we articulate it or not. We all have our assumptions about how we think, how we think learners, students, trainees, whoever our students are, learn best, and how learning activities should be designed. Um, sorry, I'm just reading the text chat quickly. Um, and something I want to just say on about models is that constructivist learning design models actually, um, you know, gradually appeared, um, including those proposed by Reeves, Mishran Kula, and others that focus more on the individual learner and or the learning designer. Whereas your older um, approaches are kind of more systems approaches, like your Dick and Carey, Smith and Reagan. Um, but all these models out there have histories. Uh, they foreground different aspects differently, and we need to be conscious of it and not treat it like a recipe. I think those early webinars that I did with Yolanda um, about that problem finding space will be quite valuable for folks to have a look at again. But I realize I am maybe talking for way too long. I have a Yes, so I see Jerome says I must share his bit and he will provide text comments. Okay, let's give that a try. Go to Jerome's slides. So Jerome also did a webinar last year and he said teaching starts with learning design. Luckily I have the slides open in Google Drive as well. So this slide was from Jerome's presentation in December 2016 and the Merge Africa uh, webinar title was Driving Technology Use Through Learning Design. So you'll find that on our YouTube channel. And he said for him it illustrates the role of the learning designer and the competencies he or she requires to be successful. Um, and he says that, you know, this shows that learning design can be a separate career path. Uh, from the lecture, but supported, supportive of the lecture. There's a confluence of skills such as in pedagogy um, between the two. So that also echoes some of the survey respondents who said that you know, the lecturer is working together with the e-learning support um, person or unit at their university. And Jerome says that uh, they use the ADDI model um, at the University of Joss, which includes uh, evaluation at every stage. But generally, they've also adopted the Dabach and Van and Ritland's uh, integrative learning design framework, so ILDF. I think I should share that in the text chat for folks. OK, so Jerome. Um, feel free to input text and I'm reading your comments from your slides. I hope I'm doing all right. Just checking in with Jerome quickly, folks. And I think what, what all, okay, great. <laughs> I think all of us have uh, in common is this thing about we've got to in, in the initial exploration and knowing who are your students, what is your context, do students access like thinking about the learning outcomes? Um, more what curriculum folks would talk about, you know, constructive alignment, thinking, thinking quite deeply about that. That happens in your exploration phase. And it's as Jerome's model here is also very, you know, he's adapted it from Cheryl Hodgkinson Williams, uh, who adapted it from what Dabak Ben and Rickland.
But I also I think you, you raise a book. Yes, can be repeated depending on how the outcome is. So it's not that you finish the one phase and then the other. So even folks who use Addy, um, it's not a linear process. And I know in um, the webinar that I did with Yolanda, the third one, we had Vili Maritz from Kaleo sharing about how they use um, Addy. And in practice, it can be quite um, it can be quite iterative. It all depends on how it's used. And you go through the process again. And on the Facebook page, Yolanda also was talking about um, this idea of testing, going through things, you know, going over things again. Thanks for sharing the link, Yolanda. And I think Jerome's got a good slide here and I think this is this is something that confuses folks. Is learning design different from teaching with technology or technology integration? So Jerome says yes. Um, although in recent times um, the term is closely associated with, with technology or technology integration. But he says, you know, it's about more than technology. Um, and he also borrows from Granny Canole's definition. And he says, uh, and I like this point, and he says the learning design is primarily about ensuring best practice in teaching and learning. That sounds quite familiar if I think about you know, sort of older colleagues to do curriculum, course and curriculum design work. They're like, well, this is, this is not new to us. It's, you know, it's something that we've always known. Um, it goes back to good practice. So just because there's technology, um, we, you know, we don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. It still comes back to good practice. Um, just that the learning design models um, and processes help us to think, think about what happens when we put, you know, throw technology into the mix, into the mix. Okay, Jerome says going back to the first slide. Okay, let me go to your first slide. Um, it says learning design is especially useful because most lecturers are not familiar with prior planning of their course except competence in their subject matter. Indeed, so in our, um, even in South Africa, it is not um, compulsory or that, that lecturers have a teaching qualification. They are subject matter experts and I imagine it's that way. Um, the case in a lot of, um, in a lot of countries on our continent. He says issues like pedagogy, learning theories uh, must feed into the learning. That usually, um, uh, that must feed in are usually unknown. Yeah, so often people will do their, like a professional development qualification of their own volition. So like me, I did a postgrad diploma after my PhD. But very few people um, actually do that or attend uh, workshops or teaching and learning conferences and or take a webinar or a MOOC. Yes. Mm, yep. Sunday says continuous professional development. Indeed. And because of you know you know landed in online teaching um, is still quite new in our context. It's a definite area of professional development. Hmm. So Jerome says it might not be possible to require lecturers to learning do yeah yeah to to, to study um, education. So learning designers then complement the teacher, giving the learner the best deal. Indeed, and I think, so there are learning designers who are lecturers and subject matter experts, and then there are learning designers who work with subject matter experts. Um, and I think their, their role is then to help the lecturer be more conscious about their pedagogic strategies, um, who are their students, how do students, you know, learn best?
Hi. So Blessing agrees. Um, Blessing, um, where, where are you from again? Also Nigeria? So it's interesting how there are some things that across the continent are, are shared. Oh, okay, cool, I remember. Um, I'll share that little story in on Facebook, but it's basically just a war story where um, I, <laughs> I share, you know, I've created these lovely online materials and people weren't using it, and I wondered why, um, and it came back to, you know, I had to think about learning design, go back to, you know, who are my students, all those kinds of things. And I think often we don't share our war stories enough. I'm aware that there are seven minutes left. Please feel free to share questions, any takeaways, insights, reflections, general impressions of this webinar. Sandeo, is there anything you'd like to add in uh, voice? Um, well, right now, uh, I think we want to listen to everybody who's here. We have uh, some learning designers from the university, and I would really love want them to, to come in and uh, talk about their experiences with uh, lecturers here, especially when it comes to the well-known ego of lecturers and uh, how you know how they are. Um, confident about the way that they teach, but eventually uh, do not question themselves, which is why I said, do we question ourselves uh, enough? So, um, and like you said, it's not about you know saying that you're doing something right or you're doing something wrong, but eventually just thinking about how is my practice and is there things that I could improve on it. So, um, thank you, Rubina, for for responding. Uh, I want to hear from them, actually. Uh, Sandeya, they are sitting, I think you said there's some sitting next to you. And then there's some more typing in the text chat. Uh, the, no, no, they're the actually are on the chat. So Rubina is from, uh, from the SIL. And there's also Shamim, who's on, on from SIL. We also have a student from one of the courses, so she uh, is actually a, a, a secondary school teacher. So, um, or maybe you know everybody else who would want to come in and, and tell us about um, what experience do they have of their classes, courses, and how do they uh, see the way that they design their courses? What what um, what help would they need? What would what type of uh, what are their needs? What are the you know what are the basic teachers' needs for implementing a good class? So um, okay, so we've got comments from Rubina. So who are you to tell me what to do? <laughs> and uh, how do we how do we actually address these issues? Um, maybe we could discuss on that. Okay, great. So feel free to continue um, this discussion in the text chat, everyone. Um, in relate, yeah, Sandeya and her colleagues have some some interesting points here. Perhaps you are a learning designer um, who's working with lecturers. What what feedback do you get? Um, or perhaps you're a lecturer who has worked with learning designers. Uh, what works? Thanks for joining us, Yolanda. Yeah, I realize some folks need to go, so if you are one of those, we thank you very much for joining the session. And remember that today is just the start of a conversation. And we really want to ask you about your, please share your takeaways and insights uh, of this webinar, because we'd like to um, offer more. Um, but we want to know what aspects we need to focus on of learning design. Shamim, I think resistance is 
um, everywhere. You'll always get those that are keen and those that are um, a bit hesitant. It might just need a bit more, uh, more of a nudge, take a bit longer. And Jerome, often this collaboration involved in, we, we take for granted um, the collaborative element of course design. For some lecturers, it's changing the reading list. And that's what they see as course design or learning design. And I just update the reading list every year. Um, Fiona, you've got a point about lecturers not confident about their, up, um, I think, the uptake of LM, institutional LMSs. I think this is an, it's broader, it, it's, it's related to learning design, I think. But it's again another issue with institutional uptake um, of LMSs. So this is not that it's not it's 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 sort of a bigger bigger issue than learning design. <laughs> Irene says, send your colleagues to the facilitating online course. Yes, thanks for the reminder. We have a facilitating online course that has got some, an extended date for late applications. Um, so we want folks to please apply by the 27th. I'm going to share the link to the course. So if you want a feel of what it's like to take a fully online course and be a student and facilitator, um, check out our course and apply. It is, it is free. We offer two free places per um, public higher education institution in Africa. Yes, we also have training sessions. However, there's this another thing when it comes to learning design, but what opportunities are there to expand our expertise um, in relation to learning design specifically. So all these things like attending a workshop that how to use the you know lessons tool on whatever platform. You know, those are all useful things but is not necessarily learning design. Pleasure Jonathan, thank you. Good point here. So I think while there might not be wrong or right approaches to learning design in a particular context, I think Jonathan's pointing out here that they, you know you get good um, learning designs and then you get poor learning designs. So good learning designs are, you know, we go back to those early slides that's aligned to who the students are, context, learning outcomes. And I think learning design, when people resist it, it's because it's about challenging one's assumptions and realizing that one, one has assumptions about um, how your students learn, what it means to teach. So for a lot of folks, you know, teaching is bums on seats. I give a one hour lecture and that, that is teaching and facilitation, online facilitation is not seen as teaching. So at the moment we, you know, I know at my institution um, I'm trying to advocate for um, that, that people see facilitation not as a sort of poor second cousin to, to lecturing. You know, facilitation is online teaching. That's also another thing that is a broader issue than learning design. Okay, it's two past two. 
I think I'd like to formally say thank you everybody for joining us and I'm sorry Jerome for your connection problems but at least we were able to work something out. Um, see we were, we were good with our learning design, we had a good learning design, we worked on our slides and had prepped, <laughs> we were very well prepared. And I want to encourage our colleagues to, if you haven't filled out our survey, survey yet, um, please do so. And why this is important is that we are also hoping to use it to design future webinars and online events. Okay, so here's the link to the survey again. Thank you all for your participation in advance. And there's also something you should check out, which is the Festival of e-learning. So you have until we we're planning a attendee-driven, um, inclusive, free online conference to take place next year in July. And we're looking for your bold ideas. So your bold ideas, please share them. There's the link. And I must say, just share that we are heading off as well to eLearning Africa next week. We're going to Mauritius, so I'm getting the chance to, you know, all actually Jerome, Jakob, all of us, Irene, part of the Emerge Africa team, we're going to be able to meet Sand Sandea face to face and her colleagues who are attending the Emerge Africa conference. It's going to be very exciting. We can't wait. And we're also presenting a pre-conference workshop, the whole team. So we're presenting also, and we're using the survey uh, results towards that as well. So there's the info about our eLearning Africa workshop. Indeed, it's a small world, and we can't wait either. We look forward to walking along the beach. Great, thank you, Mariam. And please continue discussing on our Facebook event page. Perhaps there are particular um, things that were mentioned today that you think deserve a full webinar or that you'd like folks to discuss more. Perhaps you think it's an e-learning festival idea. Perhaps today has sparked some bold ideas for you. And thank you all for attending today. Wishing you a productive uh, Wednesday further.